Hey there guys, Neil here, back with an Android app review. So for today's review, I wanted to talk about, as you can tell, a camera that basically mimics a traditional DSLR camera, but provides those same features for your smartphone. So um, I'll jump right into it. I'll start with the usual uh, stuff and then the settings and some of the extra features it provides. Um, so basically you have, when you launch it, you see something like this, you get the usual controls like auto white balancing, um, auto fo or focus mode, so um, auto focus, manual focus. Um, you can uh, slide your finger around and if you want to um, adjust how you want to focus it, you can do that. You have various other focus modes as well based on scenery and movement and things like that. Um, and then if you want to um, do the usual, if you want to fix your focus, you can do that as well. So um, there is that. And then um, you also get your ISO controls so if you want to auto or if you want it to set up from 100, and in my case, up to 3200. Um, and then if you want to change your um, exposure, you can set it, at, you leave it at the default zero or if you want to um, adjust it to negative whatever to positive whatever your camera um, supports and you can do that as well. Um, you also get your usual um, flash modes if you want to have it to automatic. Um, I'm not sure what that one is actually offhand but um, you get various flash mode controls as well so um, there is that. You can also set various uh, shooting utilities. So if you want um, a stabilization mode on or off, if you want to enable or disable a burst mode, um, there's that as well. And then you have a um, local image storage. Um, I haven't got that quite working right, so I'm not sure how well that works, but it does save to your gallery if you so choose. Um, you also have a program mode. So if you want to ha set your shutter speed, you can do that. So if you want it to... Um, depending on how fast or slow you want your shutter to open and close, you can do that. And then there's a program mode as well, which is just your standard controls as well. Um, going into settings, you do have your usual uh, settings. So depending on how good your camera is on your device, you'll have various controls. So I have a 7, 16 megapixel camera on my OnePlus 3T. So um, that's the maximum. I can set it down to... Uh, the smallest possible quality if I want as well so depending on what you uh, have what you want to set it at you can set your storage location custom storage if you want to set a geotagging um, if uh, you want to set a grid um, for f how you shoot your photos I've for the past while or so I have kept at least a stabilization line for level or uh, grids turned on just because it helps me shoot and better center my shots and know where exactly I'm placing stuff. Um, as far as the camera settings, you can have it set to review your last picture, focus before capturing. So even if you forget to capture, it will always uh, focus. I like that the most just because um, I usually just set to whatever, wherever it auto focuses, auto focuses is fine with me. Um, there's various some instances where I want to manually focus, but it's a good setting to have on. And then if you want shutter sounds on or off, compatibility and things like that. Um, as far as file, photo encoding, um, you can set it to default as PNG or JPEG. I have it set to PNG because I think it has less compression on it. And of course, if you have a photo or a phone that supports saving your pictures to raw mode or saving as a raw file, you can do that. You have that option in camera FE5 as well. Um, the benefit there is that what raw files do is that it'll store all of the camera data based on whatever the sensor or based on your camera picture lens and whatever the sensors capture. So when you go in to set it um, or edit your photo, it'll have additional data for editing as well. So you have that extra information to play around with. Um, you can also set your JPEG quality level. I just set it to 100%. Every, I just I prefer everything set as high as possible. Um, you can set the how your picture is saved as well, so if you want that. Um, everything else is pretty standard information. Um, you can also save metadata in your picture, so if you want um, just your basic information like EXIF data, they can do that. I have everything set saved into the file just so that when I go into, for example, Google Photos or Snapseed or um, if you're going to use Photoshop or the GIMP, then all of your information that you need is there. 
Um, you can set various image parameters if you want certain things set automatically. Um, I just have it set to standard. Um, you can have color channels, so if you want your usual red, green, and blue, or black and white, you can set that. Um, as far as what you see on your viewfinder, when you're, the camera is open, you can have it set to not turn your screen off. Uh, viewfinder um, orientation. It was set landscape, uh, on landscape, but I'll set it to auto automatic just to be on the safe or just to have that there. Um, for viewfinder overlays, you can also include um, various camera information um, and other information that you want if you want, uh, or other um, picture information that you want. You can also set the histogram, so your red, green, and blue values if you are in that mode. So if you kind of want to see how much of each color is going to be in that picture, you can adjust accordingly or move around and select your shot based on um, how much of each color is going to be in that shot. So you know if you have extra blue, that's kind of where the balance, color balancing is going to go in your picture. And then your histogram size, if you want to set... Um, how big or small you want that to be and if you want it to be solid or transparent and things like that. So that's the bulk of it. So you have all sorts of um, settings and information. Um, and it's basically every kind of control, or as far as my amateur eye goes, it's, it's all the different kinds of controls you want. And I found that camera FE5 takes a lot better pictures than my stock camera does in the same mode. Um, it also includes a lot more extra information in the raw file. So when I'm going into, for example, Google Photos or even in Snapseed, the pictures are that much clearer and it's kind of in that middle range between a standard picture and an HDR picture. It does have that information, um, all that extra information in there. So it takes that, it has that much better image quality. So my next step as far as what I'm doing, I'm going to do in the side project is to take side by side pictures in camera FE5 and then take an HDR picture. I use a better camera because it does to have the multiple exposure combination feature. So I want to try and compare the two, see how off they are as far as those pictures go. But as far as this regular pictures, camera FE5 is a very solid camera for what you get. Um, so it's available in Google Play in a light version for free, but you um, don't get the full range of what it can handle on your cam device's camera. If you do buy the full version for, I think it's $3.95 or somewhere right around there, you will be able to use all the features. Um, I don't think the light version has ads, but no ads. And then if your camera, for example, is, is like mine with at 16 megapixels, you can take the maximum possible picture quality with your device. And then you can play around with all the various um, toggles and all the different uh, parameters and all of that so if you're getting into photography and just have your smartphone then you have that option and then if you buy a tripod for your camera you can uh, play around with each um, various exposures and then combining them in HDR um, HDR doesn't really work well if you're just going to use your phone as a point and shoot but if you have a tripod and you take pictures at multiple exposures then you can combine them because the shot is steady and it's that much easier to combine but that is all for this particular review. So if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or anything like that, you can email me at headphonesneal at yahoo.com. You can find me on Twitter at patelin01. And of course, you can find links and all of that good stuff at patelin01.com. And of course, this review and all reviews can be found on um, YouTube at youtube.com slash patelin01. But that is all for this particular review. Thanks for watching and listening. And until next time.